Hello, beautiful people. My name is Frederick Harper and I'm a senior developer advocate at DigitalOcean. And I am super excited to welcome you to the first episode of a new series. Fred answers questions. FAQ. You get it? <laughs> so uh, my goal with that series is to answer your technical questions about DigitalOcean but also any other technical questions you may have or any questions you have about the tech industry. So I've been doing this for a long time and I hope that I'm going to be able to help you solve your issue or find answers to the question you have. Obviously, the public is developer because at the end, my goal is to give some love to developers. So if you want to participate, ask your question using that form. Is it there? It's probably there. Without further ado, Let's jump in in the first question. How to create a droplet? I often get asked how to create droplet on digital ocean. So this is our equivalent to virtual machine and people I guess people are asking me this because uh, we are saying that it's easier to use DigitalOcean, which doesn't mean that it's feature less or that you cannot do complex things on our platform. So let me show you how to do this using our dashboard. So here I'm in one of my projects. I'm in my cloud dashboard. I'm going to click get started with a droplet. That will bring me to the creation page where I have the choice of different images. So I can choose a distribution, which is the usual pad that people will do. I can also choose a container distribution. There is something new that we had last year that I really love. Uh, it's the marketplace. And so it's not about buying thing. It's more about a one click install where there is different software that you can install easily using those images while you create droplets. You can use your own snapshot you can use part of your backups to create a new droplet and you can also bring your own images to DigitalOcean. So let me go back to distribution. Uh, you have the choice between different OS. I will go with the lovely Ubuntu. You can choose different version. Uh, we always suggest to go with the LTS version, but if you want something newer, please help yourself. The second thing, I need to choose a plan. There's different plans. So the plan can go from $5 to a lot more depending on what you're looking for. So we have standard droplets. There's standard virtual machine uh, with a good mix of memory and compute resources. But if you have specific needs, you can also go with general purpose uh, when it comes to performance, CPU optimize, and also memory optimize. So if I go back to standard, I'm going to take the one that costs uh, 40 bucks per month and that include 8 gigabyte of memory uh, with four CPU, 160 gigabyte of SSD. So it's the disk space. Obviously, if you want or need more, you don't need to upgrade to a new virtual machine. So you can have something called volumes, which I may cover in a future FAQ if uh, there is some questions about volumes and include with your virtual machine with your droplet, you have five terabytes of data transfer. So there's different plans. Uh, I'm going to use this one. If I already know that I need more storage, I can have the block storage right from the droplet creation, which is a good thing to do for lazy people like me. Uh, the other thing you need to do is choose a data center region. So a good practice is to either choose a data center that is closest to most of your customers, at least if you're only uh, creating one droplet and you don't have any replication. Um, a second good practice is to try to put uh, as much as possible your different element part of your infrastructure in the same region. So in my case, um, I would say the closest to me is Toronto. So let's choose Toronto. Uh, I have some other additional option. I can use private networking, IPv6. Uh, I can uh, click monitoring and having those options already available for me. So I won't go in detail with those because I really want to show you how to create a bare bone uh, droplet. So go right to the point. The last part or 
nearly the last part. The last configuration part about the droplet, which is quite critical, is to uh, set your SSH key. So obviously you can use a one-time password uh, for root access, but it's really less secure. So a good practice is to use SSH key. And this is one of the things that happen quite often uh, where people forget that part or uh, just choose a one-time password. And at some point they forget the password or they don't know how to access the droplet. So don't be mad. Uh, nothing is lost if you didn't have the SSH key or you did not uh, remember the one-time password or you lost the email that we will send to you if you choose the one-time password because there is a way for you with the internal console within the dashboard to access your droplet and do any settings you need to do to get access after that. Final configuration about the creation. So you need to define how many droplets you want to create. So in my case, I will create only one, but if I would like to create multiple droplets with the same configurations, I can do this here. I can also choose the name that will identify my uh, droplet. So in my case, that could be FAQ1. Uh, that will be the name of my droplet. I can have tags. Uh, those are mainly for you. So to kind of like organize your resources. So you also have projects, but you can also use tags to organize your resources. And same things with a project. In my case, I will choose the demo project. One other thing I suggest, and it's not me about telling you to buy more uh, things on DigitalOcean, is to enable the backups. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that we told uh, all the people that we know, you know, friends and family, we always tell them, please do a backups of your pictures, of your computer, of any sensitive data. And quite often us as developers, we forget about that part. So what I love is that for 20% of the droplet price, you get the backups include with the droplet. And again, I want I don't want to mind about this. I just want this to work. So this is why I'm clicking enable backups right now. So I'm going to click create droplets during that time. It's pretty fast. My droplet will be created, but this is one way to do that. So for those of you that are uh, keyboard friendly and really love anything that is common line, we have a CLI tool called DocTL that you can use to also create droplet. But on top of that, we have an API that you can access and has example here, I'm going to use curl to create a new droplet using that API. So there is no magic here. There is the uh, bash variable, my system variable called token, which I uh, assign right before making that demo. So if I send that comment, I receive a response with my uh, droplet that has been created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH in my droplet. The default user is root. So change this once uh, you're going to like set up your droplet. Uh, I'm going to paste the IP here and I need to enter my here because I need to configure my console in a better way. And now I'm in my droplet. So there is nothing in that folder. Uh, so here it is. I'm in my droplet that I just created. And uh, if I go back to demo, you're going to see that my droplet is done, is now created. So this is how you create a droplet. Obviously, you have access to more uh, configuration and more setting in the dashboard, but also using the API. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of FAQ. And please have your comment below. Don't forget to send your question. But in the meantime, check your YouTube channels because there is other amazing content and not just made by me. So on that note, see you next week. Mm -hmm.